in the last video, we went on a full adventure trying to construct this LED LARP safe wizard staff based off of Willow's staff from the new TV show. We hope it's LARP safe. That's what we're gonna determine in this video. We are also gonna discuss what materials make a safe and not safe LARP weapon, whether you're making it yourself or buying it from somebody or somewhere. We're gonna go visit my friend John, who has a ton of experience in constructing LARP safe weapons. He's been on several LARP safety teams, so I 100% trust his judgment on whether or not this is going to be LARP safe. So, we go. Would this pass a safety test? Uh, having watched the video, uh, the construction video, I, I do have certain opinions on like, and, and I already have some certain opinions based upon the construction method. Uh, so my primary concern with the entire construction, I think the biggest part is the PVC, which is tends to be very wavy mm -hmm. and not as stable. Like uh, I guess for, for example, I think what I was demonstrating is uh, if I just tap this thing, you can see how it wiggles, right? Like normal weapons, you want to... Yes, this one is more uh, epic armory, I think. So yeah. You hold, if you want. Yeah, for more firm cores, you'll see that they don't... They have a little bit of it, yeah. yeah. But in general, you see how the entire thing kind of bowls over, mm -hmm. as opposed to this one when I tapped it. Uh, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you look at these two uh, buffer weapons, uh, they have very different functions and mm -hmm. intensive functions. This one looks and feels like something you're going to go into and, and fight a lot with. I'd be fine in terms of like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna wait in the middle of the battle and start swinging this around, right? And in the thick of it. It, it also has to do with, with intent and purpose, right? Right. Like, if I if I had this sword right here and it was super whippy, yeah. I would probably not pass it. Mm -hmm. I would probably be very concerned about that. It might be okay, depending on how whippy we're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, I've used whippy swords before, and they feel really weird. Uh, and I just I just don't like them, because <laughs> they feel very strange. I feel like I don't have control, and I'm very big on control when fighting. This looks to me like it'd be more of a defensive weapon. Mm -hmm. Like, you would you would have it here, and you would use it to block a few things, but you would use you would mostly be gesturing with it yeah. before you throw a packet or right. something. Yeah, more, so more prop than weapon, but I you can use it to defend with. Yes, and yeah. I mean, like the most I I would have considered myself like, and I'd run this idea by you is like maybe behind a large shield, perhaps a little bit like a, a yeah, spear, you poke at it with like, it, yeah, you know. But you're still choked up on. On the weapon, so it's not going to get you. You've got a lot, a little bit more stability for that width that might go yes. on. Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. Like, you're not going to be going in a fishing expedition. <laughs> like, you can see this thing already. Here, at PC, at PC, at PC. Yeah, so that also comes out to the intent. Something else with PVC, uh, usually, if you don't want to, if you want to deal with the whippiness of the PVC, um, you tend to keep the, the core of it under three feet. What would you suggest for a core if um, not PVC? I hesitate to suggest something anything in particular since I tend not to make really long weapons. Okay. The longest weapon I have is approximately that length, actually. It was this one. Um, the foam part needs to be replaced, and it's something I, I kind of have not had a lot of motivation to fix recently. <laughs> but uh, the core of this thing, I'm pretty certain it's a fiberglass thing. I can't tell you exactly what it is because um, uh, a friend of mine acquired the core by dumpster diving, and we don't know where. <laughs> I approve. Pay little to nothing for your components. Pretty much, yes. he, he he just found it in a dumpster and was like, "Oh, that looks like it'd be great for a buffer weapon." Nice. Who could make something out of this? John can make something out of this. <laughs> We're pretty certain it's fiberglass based upon um, how it felt when I cut into it and mm -hmm. uh, the behaviors and the properties of it. Um, you go ahead I mean, and it's point it. actually hollow. I was not expecting it to be hollow. Yeah, so based on how thin it is, uh, fiberglass is a lot more sturdy in that case, right? Like there's mm -hmm. almost no, there's a little bit of reverberation I can feel in my hands, but yeah. there's almost no wiggle. Yeah. And then you use pipe foam, correct? Yes. Okay, so pipe both things, yeah. pipe insulation. And, oh, um, and a pool noodle up here. Ah, uh, yes. And I brought a sample of the other foam, which is basically oh. the same kind of. This was just foam packaging. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, this is the yeah. diffusing light that yeah. you have in there, right? But this was a good idea. I like how the light diffuses out of this thing. You can yeah. actually see it here. Yeah, so I was really surprised that the um, the cosplay foam, the LED foam that a lot of cosplayers mm -hmm. use, um, I was kind of disappointed. It, it didn't actually work the way, diffuse the way I'd like it to. 
I did see that how it kind of pitted. Yeah. Yeah, it became little spots of radius rather this than this one. Mm -hmm. It like diffuses very smoothly. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it was a good call to utilize this one. And they do sell. I found later. I found pool noodles of the same. Oh. See, so I think in the future I might make some stuff out of that. That's clever. Oh, come on. Here it goes. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so giving you a little bit it's, of trouble. It, it is. It's giving me a little bit of trouble. Um, I noticed the button is very simple. I, I think the button is getting stuck a little bit. It's, it's, I, I was playing with it there. Yeah. I think it was the uh, the leather that has wrapped on okay. it is a little too tight, so okay. it pushes it, it presses it slightly. The actual problem was the power bank wasn't charged. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't use plastic a lot, actually. I know you can find Lexel. Yes, I, I don't know use... why I can find Lexel, but I cannot find Lexel in the PMW. Yeah, you may just have to order that online. We'll see, because I've, I've ordered, I've tried to order some things to Oregon, and it, they will not ship it. But, oh, uh -huh. is it a, like... It might be, like, like naphtha, you can't yeah. get naphtha in California anymore. Interesting. To, to thin plastic, usually how you thin plastic is... There's uh, one that starts with an X or something like that that you can also use, but um, not, yeah, no, otherwise, nope. I guess the good thing is I don't do a lot of uh, latex work. Most yeah. of my blades are cloth. Yeah, cloth is a lot kinder, especially in cold <laughs> weather. Yeah. But originally, I had uh, Flex Seal on this uh, as my, um, basically, my way of being able to not use clear plastic because I just could not get a hold of it. Um, and then... Uh, and I wanted to seal that and the, you know, the foam here with the acrylic, seal it up. And I tried to use this clear plastic dip spray. That's supposed to be a UV protectant spray. And it just peeled right off. It did not play well with the Flex Seal. And that's continuing to happen, I'm seeing, down here. Oh. You can see it, this little spider webby. This is all of that coating coming off. So just don't use it. Don't. Not for this, not for, no. I'm curious. This time, um, go back to the, the Flex Seal. Oh, the Flex Seal. Yeah, oh yeah, flex seal. I heard that worked out very well. Yeah, I still might thin it for the rest of this though. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I have to get the right stuff to thin it. Blue problem. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had blue, blue, some blue That's problems That's right, you did, on, you did mention And you had, you had a suggestion of a better glue. Well, besides the good old contact So you use the three and you use the three, uh, the contact cement is, is fine. Don't, don't get me wrong. Contact cement is a great idea. Um, I think, um, context cement is a great idea. I think uh, the, the the spray on it piece that you used is not the one that I used. I mm -hmm. used the seventy seven, right? The red use, bottle. Yeah, I used the seventy seven. So this is the high strength the ninety that three M makes. Okay. Uh, this is what I use for all of my weapons. Uh, they it handles very well if you utilize it correctly. It's it functions very similar to context cement. You don't just like put it up. You don't just glue it together. Yeah. You have to put it on one side, put it on the yeah. other side, wait for it, wait like a couple minutes yeah. for it to form tack. And you put it together and it's kind of stuck. Yeah, so it's yeah. construction very true. That thing yeah. pops off, doesn't it? This does come off, so. I'm curious. Well, it's screwed on, right? Yeah, it's screwed on. So wow. I even, I even that is plastic so dipped. It's funny because originally I was going to have this screw on, but have this just be a cap. Mm -hmm. And that was just not happening. So yeah, the wire comes out like this. Oh, that is very clever. I like that. And I wanted to make sure it's screwed on because you don't want that popping off in the middle of battle. Yep, See? absolutely. It might seem over the top, you know, um, ooh, whippiness, oh no, it stings when you get hit <laughs> with it. Um, you know, a lot of it sounds very wee wee wee, you know, but why make this stuff safe, right? Like what, you know, certain types of foams over the years, you don't want to just go to Walmart, buy some you know, pla plastic and, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, or the dollar store. Yeah, those, those some of those weapons, weapons are not those, great. No. Um, yeah, no. And, and why constructing DIY LARP weapons, you know, yeah, there's going to be a lot more scrutiny with it because, you know, you have homemade components mm -hmm. that may not be safe. You have personal experience with that. Uh, yes. Yeah, I got my jaw broken at a Velodrive game. Uh, they allow uh, headshots in certain scenarios, and one of the scenarios is certain thrown or projectile weapons. And I got hit by a javelin where the foam head rolled off. Uh, and that occurred because the person who brought it onto the field did not bring it through safe, did not have a safety check before bringing it onto the field. 
Uh, so I don't know if it was poor construction or if it was just an old weapon mm -hmm. that didn't get checked, but uh, yeah, the, the foam head rolled off in mid-flight and you could see it wobbling like as it was flying. Uh, people were saying that they were like, oh no, and uh, and it just happened to catch me on the side right here on the jaw and uh, just the full force of the entire weapon just on a singular point right here just kind of caused the jaw to break pretty cleanly. Oh my god, and you had your what, your mouth wired shut Yeah, for my a jaw while. was wired shut for like six weeks or oh. something like that. Don't sneak <laughs> weapons on the field. Put it through your safety team. Yeah. Like, come on. Just be like, oh, it's been checked before either because mm -hmm. weapons get old. They break right. down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen, um, I saw a sword. I saw a sword break. Like, yeah. It, okay. it just. <laughs> That's why this thing's in the state that it is because the foam on it broke. And I noticed that it broke and I immediately pulled it from the field. So this really comes down to intent of use, right? If you yeah. construct something that looks like this and it had that whippiness and you and you brought it and brought it in for safety, I would look at you and be like, okay, so you plan on go wading into battle with this and like swinging mm -hmm. this around, right? Like in the, in the thick of things. Yeah. I would probably say, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried that it would snap. The whippiness of it also... Uh, stresses out the thing and mm -hmm. eventually it will break because it's it, you have to think about the fl the physics of it right like when you're whipping back and forth it is stressing that material yeah um, and eventually if you just whip it back and forth it will snap and PPC has been known to do that before so I would probably not have passed that but because of how this thing is designed it's very clear that the intent of it mm -hmm. is more of a wizard staff yeah. where you're going to gesture with it maybe occasionally block or bop somebody with it, but it's not going to be a, I'm waiting to the middle of things and swing it around. Yeah. And based upon that, I would probably be okay with it. I have been at, you know, a LARP where it's one that if, they were, they're more concerned that if you drop your weapon on the field and oh, somebody yeah. else picks it up, absolutely. every single weapon has to be absolutely safe on the field, no matter who picks it up. So they are a little more strict with, which I totally, absolutely, absolutely respect. That is absolutely true. Uh, we're talking about like boffer larps, yes. uh, the Bellegarde situation, uh, things like national games, battle games like mm -hmm. Bellegarde or Amp Guard or Dag here. They have standards mm -hmm. by which that they uh, judge things, um, and they're they're far more. It's far more standardized as to what you can and cannot have, okay. um, because they have a national system. All of these lightest touch boffer games mm -hmm. tend to have their own individual criteria and individual experiences that they find that that can color their mm -hmm. what they decide to do so that's actually one of the biggest difficulties with creating light buffer weapons uh that you will have one that one game will let you use but you take it to another game they're like oh no it doesn't meet x criteria so yeah. those are always the frustrations with lightest touch games i think next time too i'm uh not going to you like glue on the vines. Oh, yes. I think what I would do is definitely use a pool noodle and carve it because yep. it took a long time to glue this on anyway. <laughs> I think carving, making the whole thing solid and uh, like you were saying, Absolutely. you know, thicker. Like if I did a thicker core though, my concern is like my hands are small. My hands are small. Yeah. And being able to hold on to something like that big is no good. I do also recognize that. Um, the the constraints that you're working with here, that yeah. you need the wiring to go through and There's you need that. the battery to There's fit. That. So you need a core that has that is a certain thickness and has an, mm -hmm. a certain amount of hollow space that will hold on to it. Yeah. And it's gonna be very hard to find any sort of fiberglass that is that mm -hmm. sized for you. Like I would be I think you would be hard pressed to find a good fiberglass tube that is just the same size the same size mm -hmm. as that PVC, right? Like even my my weapon there, it's mm -hmm. the, the it's way too narrow for what you have there. Um, so that's gonna be a concern. Not everything needs to be strike legal, if that makes sense. Okay. For example, like this this one here. Um this I would not strike somebody with this mm -hmm. part of it. It would be okay, but this part is honestly more courtesy padding. Okay. Right? So the padding that you use just to in case it gets hit, you don't damage the weapon versus like the actual strike legal head of something, right? Yeah. Um, this was a project that got abandoned. Oh. This thing is probably like the, the blade probably mm -hmm. is going to be out about like here, right? Okay. Yeah. Like that's going to be about how big it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be several inches, but that's that's kind of that's kind of what you're looking at. So this thing has 
rubber tubing in here. Okay. Um, and, and then it's layered with a vinyl tube on the inside, and the vinyl tube is partially wrapped with Kevlar. Oh, wow. So okay. it has three layers, essentially it has three layers. So there's mm -hmm. like a, a, a T intersection here of a pipe joint, and the rubber is shoved into that, and then the other piece. So it's got three layers of, I guess, how um, flexible it is, right? Nice. And it was... Uh, this is kind of a proof of concept mm -hmm. thing to see how like how flexible this thing is. So I can actually do this. And, and it doesn't it, even rip. It doesn't. That but that's beautiful. that's part of it. Part of it is due to the foam that I'm using. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can you can do a lot with this thing and it'll be fine. But the core itself is flexible at the tip. And that's the EVA foam, right? Uh, oh. This is uh, I think the def uh, I think when I looked it up it was a cross linked polyethylene or something like that. Yes. Yeah, but it, this would definitely not pass almost any safety standard because of the potential for hooking. Mm -hmm. yeah. My goal with this was to make it more pillowy, and it didn't quite end up as pillowy <laughs> as I was hoping. You wanted to sleep on it? I guess I wanted to sleep on it. It's my baby. <laughs> I also did do what I intended to do too, which you do on stuff like this, is um, I was going to poke some holes. You just do some pin uh -huh. holes so that it will actually let air out. Interesting. So it's a little more give. That makes sense. Yeah. Any concern about the bottom? There is a, it's a little stiffer on the bottom. Oh yeah, I actually saw that and I thought that was a great idea. Oh, okay. Um, so so that's okay. what you did is you used the cane tip at the bottom there, right? Um, I did, but it still has foam. So the yes. cane tip comes to about here, and then there's foam that extends about here, and then the, this is more of that clay foam to finish things off. Right yeah. Here. So I have the, pretty much the exact same thing on this setup yeah. here. Uh, I never glued this one in, but um, I could at any time. Glues the, the tip in here. You can see right here, it's the rubber paint tip with yes. a yeah. with a metal backing on it. So I don't know if the light we'll will catch that. that. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if the light can catch that right there. But it's basically a cane tip and then it's got a lot of foam around it, right? And then this is actually open salt foam here. So that that's, might be... That's what I wanted to use originally on here, in, or especially here. Yeah. And it just was not gluing very nicely. Yeah, so I made open cell foam down here because the original intent was to be able to butt strike with the sphere, right? So I could butt strike thrust with it okay. at some point. Um, so that was the intent. That's why there's okay. open cell foam at the end of it. If I didn't intend to do that, then I probably wouldn't have done the open cell foam there. But honestly, in retrospect, I find the open cell actually adds a lot of extra cush to it yes. and will preserve a lot better because yeah. it just is more gear, right? It'll preserve the integrity of the foam down there. With the closed cell foams, what I noticed is that regardless of how well you construct it in general, um, the closed cell is almost going to be always pushed against the core, and the core will almost always eventually wear through it. It's just kind of the nature of the beast, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's not much you can do about that. Uh, it's just a matter of how you how well you preserve it, and you don't lean on things like this unless you have something that you know absorbs some of that shock. I like to to rest my blurp weapons like this on my foot. Oh yeah, I do that too. Yeah, <laughs> just protect it. I, I rest it on my foot. This is, might be my lore versus data. <laughs> um, this would be lore. Maybe the next one might be data. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still like, I'm very proud of it, but there's definitely you choices that I'm like I would totally change X, Y, and Z, which I also covered the other video. But yeah, it passes. I would ish. <laughs> I would let it into a game. Uh, you okay. you would probably I I can see somebody complaining about it in terms. Of, okay. hey, the complaint is not a worry that you are going to hurt somebody with it. The complaint mm -hmm. is that oh it might break in the middle of things and then it would become unsafe. Like yeah. that's that's the that's yeah. where it is. And I feel like if it broken that's in, in such a catastrophic way you would notice immediately. Yeah. And that's uh, and because that's, of the P PVC core, right? Correct. Yeah. And so that's <laughs> why and that's why I would approve it because okay. the catastrophic failure would be so noticeable. It would be like an immediate combat hold and be like, yeah. oh hold on, like people would know. <laughs> <laughs> it passed. At least it would be okay as a defense weapon, not a main front line super wackety wackety weapon like a sword. You know, this is more like a blocking weapon or more like a prop. It would be okay. Still, this would need to go through a safety check. Always be kind and respectful to your safety team. They are usually volunteers, especially for small community LARPs. I know you may spend money or hours or pour your soul into a LARP weapon, but 
in the end, it's about what is safe out there. You don't want anybody to get hurt. So trust your safety team and respect them. I want to thank Mary Poplin, John Lynn, House Cryptid, and my own household members for being my rubber duckies, my think tank, every time I got stumped when constructing this staff. If you want to see my new video as soon as it comes out, hit the subscribe and the bell. Happy crafting, be safe, and I will see you next time.